Well, the Republican candidates, the former Congressman Will Hurd of Texas is one of the few who's been willing to speak out explicitly and unapologetically against Donald Trump. He joins me now. In addition to being a former member of Congress, he previously served as an officer for the CIA. He's the author of American Reboot, an idealist's guide to getting big things done. Uh, Congressman, good to see you again. Thank you for being with us. I, I've been wanting your take since last week. I, I mean, I was hoping you'd be on that debate stage. You weren't. Um, but I've been wanting your take because it... it in moments, tried to pretend it was an important debate uh, about important issues. But there is this one big issue that is sitting on top of the Republican Party's head right now, and that's Donald Trump. And either the party distances itself from Donald Trump or it doesn't. But until it doesn't, these small policy differences between candidates seem meaningless. Look, there was a lot of talent on that debate stage but no vision, and, and a lot of people afraid, still afraid, of, of Donald Trump, and, and that's disappointing. I, I think the fact that so many of them raised their hand when um, asked if Donald Trump was convicted, right, right. that they would still support him, um, that's pretty outrageous. And, and, and guess what? If we're going to be the party of law and order, if the GOP is going to mm -hmm. be the party of law and order, then we need to stand up for law and order. And when it comes to things like Donald Trump's own baggage, these issues are self-inflicted wounds. And I always tell my Republican friends that if we want to talk about what Joe Biden is doing and this issue that is, is starting to unravel with Hunter Biden, then we actually have to win elections and be considered people that people can take seriously. If we want to address some of his foreign policy disasters, then we actually have to win elections. And, and if, if we want to deal with things like the border, we got to do that. And, and instead, we have candidates that are saying crazy things and trying to mimic behavior that loss. Donald Trump is a loser. Well, and, and, and we the fact that we're trying to re you know continue some of his his activities after he the last election he won was in 2016 uh, that's insane. So you had uh, Nikki Haley, who sort of brought up when the conversation around everybody tried to trip over each other to see how tough they could be on abortion rights. And she said, guys, it's not really a winning thing for us to, to go down this road of a federal election ban. And then you had Chris Christie, uh, who represented sort of a small group of you, a very small group of you Republican candidates, who, who really wanted to directly challenge Donald Trump's uh, behavior. Here's what Chris Christie said, and he got more boos than cheers for saying it, but let's listen together. Here's the bottom line. Someone's got to stop normalizing this conduct, okay? Now, and now whether or not, whether or not you believe that the criminal charges are right or wrong, the conduct is beneath the office of President of the United States. You know, this is the great thing about this country. Booing is allowed, but it doesn't change the truth. It doesn't change the truth. You had a similar experience in, in Iowa. You're a guy who's actually lived the concept of conduct in politics, right? You've shown your bipartisanship. You and Beto O'Rourke uh, drove across the country. You drove from Texas to, uh, to, to Washington. Your vision, your idea of what that leadership looks like, how to say to Republicans, we can take this party and we can rebuild it into something that is worthy of calling the party of Lincoln, not getting any traction anywhere. How do you fix this? How do you, what's the problem? At what point does Will Hurd say, I, I can't do anything for this party. Maybe I can't even be in this party. Well, look, this is my party, and I'm going to fight to defend it. And I would say there is some traction. I've been in this race for a little bit over 60 days. Um, I've got I'm near 50,000 unique donors. Um, I'm tied with Nikki Haley and Mike Pence in New Hampshire, which is a critical state. And we're just getting started. And and the fact that you know people when I'm in the airport, look, I'm not flying private planes, right? I'm on Southwest Airlines. When I'm in the airport, uh, people are saying, "Hey, keep it up, keep fighting, do this thing," right? This is about building a movement of people that are normal and want a sane Republican Party or a sane conservative party to have this competition of ideas to address the challenges that our country is facing. How do we have unprecedented peace at a time that the Chinese government is trying to surpass us as a global superpower? How do we have a thriving economy at, at a time when new technologies like artificial intelligence are upending every single industry? This is what people, people want. But guess what? Those folks that believe in that are not following, um, are not always watching political news 
news or mm -hmm. doom scrolling on social media. They're worried about putting food on the table, roof over the head. They're not responding to phone calls from pollsters, right? And, and so the reality is there is way more people that do not want a rematch between Joe Biden and Donald Trump than there aren't. And so those are the people that we have to activate. And if some of your viewers believe that, then I need your help. Go to hurtforamerica.com and help a brother out. Give whatever you can to make sure that we continue to take this message to the streets. I love that you want to talk about China. I love that you want to talk about AI. And I do doom scroll still. And I came across a tweet of yours on August 23rd uh, in which you talk about some stuff about uh, the border and national debt and China. And then you say, to solve these problems, we must retire Joe Biden and deliver the Republican wins that Donald Trump can't. Here's the one issue. And I wish I'm, I'm pretending I'm going to pretend right now, Will Hurd, that you're doing very well in the primary rankings and that you might be uh, the Republican nominee and you might be running against Joe Biden. I want to put up uh, their word, not mine, Bidenomics, and, and say what they're talking about. 13.2 uh, million jobs created since the pandemic. So if you take out all the jobs that were you know, lost to the pandemic, you're still about 5 million ahead. Unemployment, historical low, 3.5%. Manufacturing jobs created 789,000. Inflation, 3.2%. You look over the across the pond to the UK, which has a conservative government, and their inflation is, is multiples of where we are. It's actually a hard record to fight against economically. Well, well, not necessarily. Look, like, why do so many Americans still feel like things aren't getting better or their future is a little bit bleak? Uh, one of those reasons, despite what inflation is doing day to day, uh, in the last 23 years, for this century, the cost of goods and services has increased three times average salaries. That's the issue that people are wanting to address. When you look at those unemployment numbers, if you go to a place like New Hampshire in the North Country, this is the northern part of the state, there's a lot of people that are working two and three jobs in order to make things in order to make things work or there's a lot of people that are not looking for jobs so these are the conversations we should be having when 65 percent of americans think that ai is going to take their jobs um they want to know is how are we going to make sure that the federal government plays a role and and works with the private sector to prevent something like that happening to make sure that ai is creating better paying jobs and not leading to unemployment so those are the kinds of conversations and debates that we should be having and that's the opportunity the gop would have if we had nominated someone who's not a nut who's not a racist who doesn't say misogynistic things you know who's not a homophobe. And, and it should be really simple, right? The fact that I actually have to say that, especially at a time when you have candidates like Vivek, you know, saying crazy things about um, calling calling Democrats uh, grand dragons of the, of the Ku Klux Klan, which is ignorant and insane and distasteful. Um, it's, it's, it's frustrating because that's the opportunity that Republicans have. And I would love to have that debate with Joe Biden about Bidenomics and, and how there's a better way uh, to make sure for the next 247 years, we do what we've done for the last 247 years. And that's having a build an economy that's the envy of the world. I would love to listen to such a debate. Well, good to see you as always. Thank you for being with us. Will Hurd is a former United States congressman from Texas. He's a GOP presidential candidate. He's a former CIA officer and is the author of American Reboot, an idealist's guide to getting big things done.